Hey everybody, welcome to the bar. Today, we're talking about My Hero Academia Vigilantes Chapter 78, and I cannot believe the story took a left turn like this. It's absolutely ridiculous. We can honestly say that now, the story is approaching the final battle, and it could quite possibly wrap up by the end of August, around its fourth year of serialization or so. That's not official whatsoever, but it's just kind of the vibe that I've been getting from the pacing, because after this week's chapter, the next chapter has to be balls to the walls insane. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to wait almost a month until the next chapter. So, as Samuel Jackson in Jurassic Park would say, Hold on to your butts. Because my theories will hopefully have you thinking about what's about to happen. As usual though, this video will contain spoilers for both My Hero Academia and Vigilantes. So you know the deal. Go ahead, read them both, head on back, because like with Shirakumo's story, Vigilantes once again is setting itself up to cross over. Let's get started. So, the chapter starts with a very young pop step asking her mom how she herself could get onto TV. Her mom explains that usually people who end up on TV are heroes and performers. She asks the young pop step, which would she rather be, somebody who saves people or somebody who sings and dances? The next panel we see is slowly becoming encased by bees, burning away that memory as we see her finally make the decision to sing and dance. The next panel is pop step launching her attack. She's blowing up the town of Naruhata once again, and this time though, the heroes were ready for her performance, as they begin to charge in after Pop Step. We then get a flash sideways. This time, it's the point of view of number six and Compass Kid. Compass Kid is going on about his life as a hero. He states that him putting on a cape for this incident is going to be his last act as a hero. He got himself a high paying job that takes care of his family, and he wants to be with his kids and tell them stories about how cool a hero their father once was. His life as a hero really hasn't gone very far, because one of his signature moves is spinning in circles really, really quickly. And ironically, he mentions that, you know, a compass actually doesn't really do that and spin out of control. So from the beginning, Compass Kid was kind of looked at like a joke of a hero. Sidebar, before I go a little bit wild here, if there wasn't a clear death flag, it is this. Anytime a character starts talking about their life with their family and makes a declaration about how this is their final act, nothing good is really going to ever come of that. And as he states that after this job, he's going to hang up the cape, one of Popstep's explosions reach the area, leaving him wide-eyed and terrified. Once again, Popstep jams all communications in the area, leaving the heroes without reinforcements as Number 6 and Compass Kid try to contact Tsukauchi and let him know that Popstep has begun her attack. The heroes begin to converge on Popstep's location, but what they weren't expecting was her proficiency in wielding both quirks. Pop screams, it's showtime, and begins to sing her hit song Inferno as she continues her onslaught. From there, we pan over to the Hotter Bros Cafe. Hey, look, it's a kitty. Inside, various friends of the vigilantes and Pop Steps stand by as they watch their friend destroy their town. The two middle school troublemakers from Chapter 3, who are now graduates from high school, Ichimoku and Jubei, they're wondering if they can just do anything. The Hata Bros assure them that heroes are on scene and they're ordinary civilians, they would just be in the way. Suddenly, Kamayan, the ex-next level villain, abruptly sticks his nose in the conversation and states that they are not ordinary civilians. This is their town, I mean, come on. But as Kamayan utters those words, we pan over to a wide-eyed Koichi, dripping in sweat as he sees Pop Step's explosions. Koichi immediately signals Soga, and you can just hear that, you know, that action music that they always have. The adrenaline begins to pump, and when I first read this, it kind of felt like my adrenaline was starting to pump too. They suit up and they head towards the city as Pop Step is continuing toying with the pro heroes. And what she does is continue to give all of the heroes in the area a severe beatdown. I mean, Compass Kid's face kind of says it all. He's way out of his depth right now. He's a hero for the wrong reasons. He's just looking for a simple accolade, and now it could possibly mean that his kids grow up without a father. Popstep revels in her destruction as she's toying with the heroes, and then we head to the final two pages of the chapter, the point of view of the police. Tsukauchi stands atop a building with his police force, realizing that these heroes are gonna have a really hard time, and they are having a really hard time because they just lack the teamwork. My guess is, Tsukauchi is the type of person that will always take these types of situations seriously, but big-named heroes will always choose not to, which means that for a local villain, top heroes are not immediately enlisted. But then, we see who Tsukauchi's hero backup was, and as he steps forward, the words themselves begin to set on fire, stating that this sickening noise, this song Inferno, it's garbage. If this villain wants to speak of Inferno, he'll be the one to give her a real taste. And then, the number two pro, 
the flame hero endeavor appears and then the chapter ends now before i begin rambling about what i think is going to happen i want to talk about some of these side characters and what their role might actually be in the final undertaking of vigilantes first off i know there's a lot of people that think that compass kid might be sliding go from the meta liberation army there were a lot of people that also thought koichi was sliding go as well I don't think that's necessarily true. If you see here, Sliding Go is a very swole individual and Compass Kid is pretty fed. Unless like this whole incident makes him lose his entire family and then he goes into like super training mode. I don't see it happening. I'm not trying to body shame the guy, but come on, I'm just, he's not Sliding Go. If he is, I'll say I'm wrong, but he's definitely not. Secondly, I want to address the various residents of Naruhata, like, you know, the Hata Bros and Jubei and all them. I feel like since they were shown, everybody at the end of this incident is going to come to the aid of the vigilantes. With communications down, it's just kind of leaning that way, you know? And at this point in the story, Endeavor really hasn't realized the error of his ways, and he started his path to redemption. The last thing that we all want is him to go straight after Koichi after everything is settled. But I have a feeling that it's likely that all of the civilians will come to the aid of Koichi afterwards. If that isn't the case though, we could possibly be heading towards a pretty dark ending for Vigilantes. I don't want to think that number 6 actually wins and the Vigilantes get thrown in jail though. But back to the townsfolk real quick. The residents of Naruhata don't really rely on heroes when you think about it. When something seriously wrong happens in Naruhata, a top hero shows up. Anytime small crime is happening, normal heroes don't even bother. The closest thing to a hero the people of Naruhata had was a racer head, and as of three years ago, he left to become a teacher. So, when this incident unfolded, Tsukauchi tried to outsource for help. He scraped together a bunch of scabs that are being smoked because they outright suck. And if you're a resident of this town, I mean, it's pretty much shown to us. All you have to do is shout the crawler and most likely he would appear. A vigilante was your hero because the average hero just wants fame so bad that they didn't want to bother with purse snatchers and perverts. Koichi, on the other hand, is always there to help the little guy. Now I have to talk about the oh snap moment. When I was reading this chapter, if you would have told me that Endeavor was going to show up, I would have called you crazy. And now, out of nowhere, the number two hero shows up to an incident that didn't even bother enlisting a proper hero team. If I had to break out my foresight though, I would say that this is probably going to tie into My Hero Academia. The fact is that Endeavor is pretty much center stage right now in My Hero, and it shows me that once again, My Hero and Vigilantes are only mere months apart in their serialization when it comes to crossing over with one another. I mean, think about it, we learned about Shirakumo and Vigilantes, and not even a month later we learned about Kurogiri's origin. The teams are cooperating here, let's not neglect that. With that being said, Endeavor showing up, he'll probably immediately engage Popstep. Endeavor doesn't bother with small time thugs, and with number 6 seeing Soga in Knuckle Duster's gear, it's all but certain that he's gonna flip the script as well. I mean, when number 6 sees Soga in Knuckle Duster's gear along with Moyu and Wrapped, that could mean that number 6 probably just kills Compass Kid on the spot just to make the vigilantes look like murderers before Endeavor arrives on scene. I mean, if this is all a part of number 6's plan, the last thing the vigilantes need is a confrontation with the number 2 hero. This is the guy that pretty much is known to take things way too far when it comes to apprehending villains. And this is definitely a younger endeavor. Him showing up in that uniform, in my opinion, shows us that the timeline may not be as wide as we think. I'm gonna make a full video about the Vigilantes timeline eventually, with the help of the Vigilantes section of the My Hero Discord. Shout out to Noah and Just, thank you for letting me, you know, spam a bunch of ideas at you. But we're gonna figure this out, I promise. But my underlying theory is, at the end of Vigilantes, it'll only be mere months apart from the current arc of My Hero Academia. Now, my main theory here is that if Koichi can get through to Endeavor, I know, I know, it's a big ask, but he actually might be integral in saving Popstep. A beehive floats around 95 degrees, so if it gets hotter than that, the hive will begin to melt. We know that Knuckle Duster's way of saving Pop means that she kinda has to die. But what if this is the moment in Endeavor's life where something happens that helps Endeavor realize that he needs to start feeling a little bit more compassion? In front of him either lies a villain or a brainwashed girl in some serious trouble. But all it takes is one misunderstanding and all of the vigilantes end up in Tartarus. Meanwhile, if Soga and the boys are left to deal with number 6, I see them losing and Knuckle Duster coming back to aid them. Let's be real, number 6 is Knuckle Duster's unfinished business, and as such, he should make a final appearance to save his pupils. 
And to be quite honest, it's kind of dumb not to think Endeavor would not notice who Knuckle Duster is. I mean, they're not really far off in age. I would say that maybe they're anywhere between three to six years apart. So after the fact, I think that Endeavor, who's a pretty intuitive guy, would realize that, hey, this really big hulking dude that just fought against somebody that had that same quirk that, that's Overclock, isn't it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you O'Clock? That kind of aha moment? I just think that maybe even Endeavor could possibly be inspired by O'Clock. I mean, when you kind of look at their hero uniforms, the lining and all that stuff are kind of like, you know, resembling one another. I know to some people they're like, yo, Endeavor would never be inspired by anybody, but like, we have seen Knuckle Duster inspire people in the past. We've seen him inspire Stain to go full-blown villain. What if Knuckle Duster's final act as a hero inspires the number two pro to live with a little bit more tolerance in his life, or else he'll end up like Knuckle Duster, an old drunk, corkless, with no drive? Either way, if the timeline pans out the way that I want it to, the current events of Vigilantes is happening during the forest training arc in My Hero Academia which means that this fight could be happening mere days or weeks before All Might vs. All for One 2, which Endeavor was in attendance of. So, this battle could technically be the snowball that begins to fall down the hill and be the catalyst that makes Endeavor ask All Might what it means to be a symbol of peace. What if Endeavor saves Popstep's life, and he just begins to start thinking outside the box, and then the next thing you know, two weeks later, he's forced to become the number one hero? The reason why I say this is because Vigilantes doesn't just introduce characters for the hell of it. If they did just introduce Endeavor for the hell of it, that would just be a huge disservice to the entire manga. Every single character has played a part in the larger story to a degree. When Aizawa and Stendhal showed up, those were characters of little consequence and, to our understanding, for the moment had no impact to the narrative. It was just cool to see new and old characters. Then Stendhal gets punched in the face and gets inspired to become the hero killer Stain, and we literally learn all about Aizawa's time at UA only during Vigilantes. So, when Popstep is brought in, my guess is Makoto, Tsukauchi's sister, will be the one that helps the population and the police realize that this wasn't Popstep destroying their town, but a villain known as Number 6 manipulating her brain. Also, if Endeavor does get the vigilantes thrown in jail, this could just be another thing added on to, you know, his little fake rap sheet that we're building. But the way I see it, everything is going to be falling into place little by little, chapter after chapter. And now, the fall of the heroes and structure in My Hero Academia means that old heroes are going to start coming out of the woodwork. All Might's retirement meant old villains were going to start coming out. But now that this is going on, you're going to see old heroes that were retired just start coming out of retirement to help the cause. And if there's one person that could possibly be retired at this point in time, it's Koichi. And if there's anybody who could teach Deku how to fly, it's the guy who's been hinting at it since chapter 1. I mean, imagine if this entire time Vigilantes was setting itself up to be the introduction of Koichi as Deku's next teacher. If there's one thing that we could say about Vigilantes, it's that this is not one of those spin-off mangas that separates itself and doesn't acknowledge the front story. Several heroes have crossed over into Vigilantes. So saying that the crossover won't eventually happen, it's an outright lie. But that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. I'm sorry this video came out so late. I actually recorded an Endeavor video prior to the chapter review about why I believe he's not a redeemed character and why he's only on the path to redemption, when suddenly this chapter dropped. There aren't many inconsistencies, but either way, I just want to hammer home the fact that I don't think Endeavor is a redeemed character whatsoever yet. He's on the path, you know? I'll drop that video later in the week, and we can hash it out there. If you have any theories though about this chapter, about what you think is about to happen, or if you think my theory might have sparked an idea, be sure to write in the comments down below. I do read every single comment, even the meme ones. That was kind of hurtful about the Chuck E. Cheese stuff, guys. I know, I, di I didn't have any friends, come on. But this is Dan, signing off. Peace.